right, so real quickly, go with me to Matthew um, 18. And I'm going to need you guys to help me preach this morning. All right? Time starts as I get done reading my text. All right? Uh, Matthew 18. Uh, I'm going to start. I'm going to start with verse 1. And at the same time, the disciples came, uh, disciples came to, and at the same time came the disciples unto Jesus, saying, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And Jesus called a little child unto him and said, him in the midst, set him in the midst of them. And he said, Verily I say unto you, except ye be converted and become as little children, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Whosoever therefore shall humble himself as, the little chi as this little child, the same is greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And whoso shall receive one such little child in my name receiveth me. But whoso shall offend one of these little ones which believe in me, it were better for him that a millstone were hanged around about his neck and that he were drowned in the depths of the sea. Woe unto the world because of offenses. For it is must needs be that offenses come. But woe to the man by whom the offense is coming. The offense means sin. In other words, woe unto the world because of sin. Suffering is coming because of sin to the world. Uh, verse 18, wherefore, if thy hand or thy foot offend thee, cut them off and cast them uh, from thee. It is better for thee to enter into life halt or maimed rather than having two hands or two feet to be cast into everlasting fire. Verse 9, and if thine eye shall offend thee, pluck it out and cast it from thee. It is better for thee to enter to, uh, life with one hand, one eye rather than having two eyes to be cast into hell fire. Let's say amen to the reading hearing of God's word. Amen. Um, I just want to tell you real I just want to talk real quickly. Um, I want everybody to repeat, repeat after me. I, I want, want to make it, to make it in. in. Look at somebody and tell them, I want to make it in. I don't know about you guys, but I really, I really, really want to make it into heaven. Anybody want to make it to heaven? Yes, Lord. I really, really want to make it in. And I want to do whatever it takes for me to make it in. The context of what I'm talking about today is uh, we have in the scripture, uh, the disciples come up and ask Jesus, who's going to be the greatest in the kingdom? Because their mind frame is that he's establishing his kingdom and he's the Messiah. So where's my position? Where's my place? They're focused on the wrong thing, in other words. And he's telling them, except you come as this child, you can't even make it into the kingdom of heaven. And that blows my mind because when I think of what really brought this message about is that we, this morning we were sitting down in my office and uh, Brother Dunn was waiting and we were waiting for some of the brothers to get here. And I just saw uh, uh, Chrissy. She was just playing like a child, just kept coming up to my uh, off, uh, to where I was sitting, looking at me, waving, going back, then coming back. Wait, one thinking about nothing, had just woke up, but was just enthused, innocent, one thinking about the world, one thinking it was a little warm in there, donuts or whatever, you know, was going on in that environment. And it's amazing how Jesus wants us to come like a child in mind frame and in spirit, because as a child, a child simply believes whatever their parent tells them. Amen. Amen. So a child is totally caught up and totally wrapped up into their parent and their, their mother and their father. And you can be anybody, but there's nobody like their parent, right or wrong. And so God wants us to be like children when it comes to our relationship with him. We want to tr he wants us to trust him. He wants us to be found with innocence, without spot of blemish. He wants us to live right. He wants us to be holy. He wants us to be in a place that like a child, a child, you don't think of a child being evil. You don't think of a child being uh, uh, having an ulterior motive. You don't think of a child having this desire to do wrong or to manipulate. You think of a child as a good, whole, little body person. Amen. Amen. Now, uh, y'all, some of y'all would disagree. You ain't met my little cousin, uh, little baby. That one right there, uh, he's a male. All right, so, but, but overall, children are what we consider very good little people. We love children for the most part. And Jesus is challenging his disciples to be like child. Matter of fact, he says something else. He says, if you offend any of these little ones, what he was speaking to was his children. So since he paralleled us like child's coming as child, he said, woe unto him that offends any of us, causes one of us to stumble, causes one of us to fall, causes one of us to make a mistake. It is better for him to put a stone, a millstone on his neck and be drowned than to cause one of his children to be to cause to, uh, to, to sin. That's powerful because what I want to talk about again is 
making it in. I'm challenging you this morning that as a believer, as you walking in your purpose and what God has given you, are you in position to help your brother and sister get in or are you a stumbling block to that little one, that child? Sometimes we're challenged with thinking only about us. Like these disciples, our main um, conversation with God sometimes is, what is for me? What are you going to do for me? What's in it for me? Um, where am I going to be? What is my position? What is my place? What do I have? What, what can I do? What, that's where most of our mind frames are. Most of us come to church trying to just get. Our mind frame is, I ain't thought about, I need to worship so somebody can see my worship this morning. Because one of my brothers and sisters is down, so I'm coming with my mind made up and stayed on Jesus so that I can worship in pureness. And maybe that will transfer on someone else. Most of us is just, I'm trying to get to a place where God can bless me this morning. And so our mind frame is very similar to these disciples in this Bible. We're not thinking really about kingdom. We're thinking about our place and our of uh, 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 pleasures and our desires in kingdom. Those are two different mind frames. But in the text, Jesus tells them, if you woe unto you if you cause your brother or sister to stumble. Woe unto you if you are not helping your sister or brother go forward. If you want to make it in, it's got to be more about uh, this thing than just you. Somebody say amen. amen. I want to make it in. I really, really want to make it in. I, I, I want to make it to heaven. I understand I cannot go there by myself. I've got to take somebody with me. There's somebody around you right now that you have been sitting in neutral that they need you to get in overdrive because they need help right away right now. But your mind frame is on the wrong thing. I know it's real what you're going through. I know you're struggling with some things. But if you ever get in the mind frame of Christ, did Christ want to die? No. Did he want to be rejected? No. When he sent 70 disciples out and they came back with the power and he told them unless you eat of my flesh, drink of my blood and then they all left him but the twelve did you think he wanted them to desert him? No, but he still thought about you uh, in the midst of his affliction in the midst of what he was going through in the midst of what he was dealing with he was still thinking about you I am challenging you this morning as believers to think about somebody else if you want to make it in it won't be just because of you it will be because you're thinking about somebody else the Bible says no greater love is it than a brother that's willing to lay down his life for another brother oh my god are you willing to lay down your life I know you're busy I know you have things going on. We all got property, uh, uh, priorities. We got our money to make. We, got a, we all got a nine to five. But do you love your brother enough to lay down your life? Do you care enough about your brothers and sisters to seek them out and pray for them and, and talk with them and love them and care for them and be there with them through the good and the bad to be have tough love for them sometimes? I'm not saying you agree with everything they do. I don't say you like everything they do. But a brother is there. A sister is there in the midst of the condition. So it's not about what you do or don't do to me. It's about who you are to me. Somebody say amen. amen. Thank you, Jesus. So then he goes on and he says something powerful that messes me up, y'all. He messes me up. And I want y'all to help me preach this morning. He says, if your hand offends you to do what? Cut it off. Because it's better for you to enter into the kingdom without a hand than to have both hands and go to hell. Right. Now, let me, uh, y'all real quick, y'all going to help me preach this morning? Amen. Y'all going to help me preach it? Y'all going to leave me alone? Amen. Okay. All right, we're we going we gonna Wednesday night in just a little bit. Somebody tell me, just shout out, what do you do with your hand? Somebody shout out the thing you can do with your hand. Feel. Feel. Right. Right. Dry. Eat. Dial. Dial. Shoot. Okay, I like that. Yeah, you shoot the ball. Yeah, shoot that shot. You can shoot with your head. Amazing. All these things, right? But if my driving, oh my, y'all not hear what I'm saying. If I use my hands to drive to a place, if I'm if I'm a road rage person, and if that, I might not even know that this is my sister in Christ, but because I'm a road rage person and I cut them off because I just got somewhere to go. If that it causes them to be a stumbling block, that's what he's talking about. If my dialing. If I'm calling to gossip on somebody, if I'm calling to be negative on somebody, if my doubt using my hands, it is better for me to cut my hands off if it's going to send me to hell. Some of y'all are going to hell because you're dialing with your hands. 
Uh, uh, if, if my head is giving me, giving me the ability to surf my Facebook and I'm looking at what I shouldn't be looking at, doing what I shouldn't be doing, commenting where I shouldn't comment, it's better for me to cut my head off so I can't get to no Facebook than for me to be all on Facebook and saying what I want to and go straight to hell. Yeah, I'm going somewhere. He says if my foot offends me, it's better to cut my foot off. Somebody tell me something you can do with your feet. Wow. You walk. I'll stop right there. If what I, where I'm going is putting me in position to not serve God, to not live for God, if where I'm standing right now is a place where God doesn't want me to be, if I'm entertaining things because I'm choosing to go there, it's better for me to have no feet at all and get to glory than to have both of my feet and get to hell. Somebody say amen. amen. Thank you, Jesus. He then says something about our eyes. Somebody say what do you do with your eyes? What do you do with your eyes? Well, you, 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 okay, I love you so much. Uh oh, somebody else give me something else to do with your eyes. Oh, I'm sorry. You look. Oh, I'm going to jump real back to the hand. Somebody said feel on the hand. If that feeling caused you to feel the wrong thing, you can go to hell. All right, y'all get that later. All right, but get back to look. If you're looking at the wrong thing, looking at the wrong person, looking at the wrong thing of the person that you're supposed to be entertaining. I know women, y'all have seen men that's supposed to be shaking your head and they not making eye contact. You say amen if it's ever happened to you. Amen. They not making eye oh, okay, I got some women in here that experience that. They not making eye contact, they're looking at the wrong thing. They're supposed to be saying hi and they try to say hello to the wrong thing, amen? And so, so, so you gotta understand if you're looking what you're giving attention to with your eye, Jesus says very clearly, see, I'm trying to get y'all weak. This is right in Wednesday night, his words. We're going to go deeper in this Wednesday night. Y'all need to come on out. But, but if your looking is causing you to sin, offenses is what the text says. If it's causing you to sin, if your looking is preventing you from loving your sister because you're too, good, you're too, uh, too much into her body and to her fit. Can I be real this morning? You too much into her figure. If you're if you're looking, you too women, you too much into his pectorials and his biceps, and so you can't see, you can't hear him because you too, you looking at him. He said, "Oh, he can be my rock. He can be my Dwayne Johnson." Uh, All right. Uh, so if, if, if you, if, but if you're looking, it's got you that far off. It's better for you to pluck your eye out and make it in. First, have both your eyes and go to hell. The challenge is many of us. Number one, and never signing up to cut one our hand. We're not about to cut our feet. And oh Lord, you ain't taking none of my eye. You will not call me Sarkar. <laughs> so the challenge then, if we want to fulfill this scripture, we're going to have to really heed God's word because Jesus is being very very serious. They asked a light question. What, who's going to be the greatest in heaven? They asked a light question and he got real deep on them real quick. He said, if y'all don't have this child mentality, if you don't understand that it's not about being the greatest, it's about being a servant, it's about being loved, it's about being obedient to God's will, you're going to go in with a full body on fleek, dressed into impress, booted and suited straight to hell. And how many believers come dressed up every Sunday morning on their way to hell? Can I, can I stay in front of line so you don't think I'm talking about you? All right. I'm challenging you this morning because I want to make it in. I want you to really think about do you want to make it in? There might be some things you need to shift. Your priority of how you treat those around you, whether your co-workers or whether uh, uh, your brothers and sisters in Christ, there may be some shift in priority you might need to make. There might be some cutting off that you need to. There, that maybe you don't need to cut off your eyes, but need, maybe you just need to get rid of your TV. If that's what's for, some, you know exactly what is keeping you from being connected to God, right or wrong. We know what's making us struggle with God. And God is simply telling you, if you want to make it in, you're going to have to cut it off. You can keep entertaining it. You can keep playing with it all you want to. You can keep justifying it and keep allowing your flesh to win the battle. But you are surely, surely killing yourself and putting yourself in hell because you're entertaining and allowing yourself to be tempted with things that God is saying, cut off if you want to make it in.